What happens when you put a diesel in a monster truck and you don't have instant manifold air density when you need it? Oh boy, oh boy. That's okay, Dave, we got your back. Hi, I'm Gail Banks. Welcome to Banks Insider. I want to put a diesel engine in a monster truck. So I got a hold of the guys in Monster Jam and they sent me Cynthia Gautier's Monster Mutt Dalmatian. Came into our shop, we put sensors on it, we put our iDash Data Monster data logging system on it, gave it a pat on the head, sent it to San Jose. All right. Well, she's making a six, look at that, 900 horsepower. This thing likes airflow. It likes pounds of air to mix with pounds of fuel. Whoa. She gets a little hang time with this thing. Puts it in the air. Look at that. Boost number is not too big, but boy, it has got some manifold air density cooking. Oh, holy crap. Make some big numbers. You look at the CFM, the engine's pumping down there. 800. Boy, is she in and out of the throttle. We're, we're going to have to have some throttle response for that. Uh oh, here we go. This is serious. Well over a thousand horsepower there. This is cool. We're calculating the horsepower from the air mass flow. And we're calculating the air mass flow from the engine RPM. Oh my. So we're data logging because I want to know everything about that 540 inch 1400 horsepower blown alcohol motor that's in there right now. I want to know intake manifold air density, or what we call MAD, manifold air density. That's the key ingredient right there. But I want to know everything I need to know to put the engine out of that monster truck in my dyno cell one and run those numbers on the dyno now I'm predicting horsepower using the I-dash. I want to see if my predictions are actual. But in terms of throttling the engine and building up a dyno profile, I'll take everything I data logged and make the engine do it on the dyno. That'll fingerprint what I have to do with the diesel to equal it or to kick its ass. The I-dash super gauge will do virtually everything you're seeing here real time. The data monster adds a feature set that takes everything you're reading and everything you're not reading, up to 100 different readings, and samples them 20 times a second and puts them on a micro SD card. This is a four gig card that comes with it. And it allows you to data log that, those 100 channels 20 times a second for months. So we stopped using the $60,000 Deweytron like guys in Detroit use to data log. And we've started using our $379 gauge that you can put in your own car. So the first problem in any engine build is how much power do you want to make? It always starts there. It doesn't start with I want a 500 incher. It doesn't start with I want to make 20 pounds of boost. It starts with a power goal, at least mine do. In this case, the number is 1400 horsepower. They're doing it at 7400 RPM. With a diesel, we're not going to be turning it at 7400 RPM to make that number. I know that to make that number with the air fuel ratio of alcohol, they need 137 pounds of air per minute to make that 1400 horsepower. So my question is, how much 
air density do I have to produce in the intake manifold to flow that into the cylinder heads from the intake manifold into the heads make the power notice guys I didn't say boost I said manifold air density boost does not speak directly to horsepower manifold air density is not gauge pressure like a boost gauge which leaves half the pressure on the table it's all the pressure pushing the air around the valve and into the cylinder so it is absolute pressure some people read in bar some people read in kpa but we're starting at a perfect vacuum and including all the pressure pushing into the cylinder second what's the temperature of the air if you want a lot of density you want cold air anybody who designs cold air intakes which I've been doing for 50 some years understands that cold air is denser air more air per cubic foot you also want dry air humidity impacts air higher humidity reduces the air density you're inhaling into the engine so we want a lot of pressure and we want no temperature and really we'd like to have no humidity a standard day the day that we correct all of our dyno readings throughout the United States too they call it J1349 on that standard day the air temperature is 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees centigrade the air pressure is 14.35 pounds absolute not gauge we're not talking boost here guys boost is toast it's gone so in the case of density it's temperature pressure and humidity uh, the humidity on the standard day is zero percent on that standard day the air density is 72.2 pounds of air per thousand cubic feet now we're to cubic feet engines pump cubic feet in this case we inhale air into the blower we compress it adding to its density and we force it into the intake manifold that's where the density matters the most I prefer for conversation percent so on that standard day you have 72.2 pounds of air that's a hundred percent day that's 100 percent mad reading I've also got the ambient air density in the arena and it's about 99 percent here and at this point her boost air density that's the density being added by the blower is 43.9 percent so your total manifold air density is 145 percent there's a number you can sink your teeth into because it means something for this thing to really work I've got to have an air density in the intake manifold of 119 pounds per thousand cubic feet I'm starting with whatever was there on that day <clears throat> in terms of air density about 71 and a half pounds per thousand cubic feet so I've got a job to do I start with ambient air density I add boost air density to that though those two added together give us manifold air density manifold air density per cubic foot times the cubic feet the engine is pumping and this thing gets way up there over a thousand cubic feet a minute that determines how much fuel I can put in there and the fuel determines the power output but without the air there is no fuel you've got to have the right air fuel ratio these alcohol motors are something odd 4.9 to 1 air fuel on this any of you guys who talk out air fuel out there that'll freak you out so here's what we know we know that air is directly related to horsepower breaking it down 9.8 pounds of air per minute per 100 horsepower is what we need that's how I got to the 137 pounds of air per minute at 1400 horsepower but as you're running this is all changing so we have to watch how that horsepower builds and ebbs when 
keys in and out of the throttle, how quickly this thing responds. We take it, play it back, which I'm doing on these four gauges right now. I'm playing back one of her runs. And we also can do what's called histograms. So we can look at RPM, we can look at rate of RPM change per second. And I mean, this thing is, I've seen over 7,000 RPM per second change of RPM with this engine. That's quick. We're looking at boost pressure, which doesn't tell much of a story because it's only the pressure above ambient, but that's there for the Hanyaks that still read boost. And down here, we're reading manifold air density. That's the holy grail. That's what tells you what you're doing. I don't care if it's alcohol, propane, gasoline, nitromethane, I don't care what the hell you're burning. Toluene, hydrazine, be my guest. At the end of the day, most of us are burning gasoline. That takes 10 pounds of air per minute per 100 horsepower, rule of thumb, just so you know. So it's real close to the 9.8 pounds for the alcohol. And for you diesel guys, diesel takes, depending on whether you're smoking out the sun or not, I'm not a big advocate of that. So for me, uh, diesel takes around 12 pounds of air per minute per 100 horsepower. So there you've got kind of a, they're all about the same, oddly enough, because the amount of fuel, the air fuel ratio is all over the place. 4.9 for the Alki motor, gas burner probably around 12 to one at full power. And for the diesel, 16 to 18 to one, somewhere in there. So way different air fuel ratios, but the air demand per 100 horsepower it is almost the same. The range is 9.8 to 12. So if we go from air density to horsepower, we can do it right here. We've stopped her run. She's at 1,078 horsepower. Uh, her manifold air density is 106 pounds per thousand cubic feet. You know, right around 10 pounds of air uh, Per 100 horsepower, so you got 106 pounds of air and 1,078 horsepower. You start to see how looking at the air mass uh, in the intake manifold, manifold air density, can drive you all the way to horsepower. Now that you know what to look for on the gauges, I want you to watch Cynthia do some donuts at over 1,000 horsepower. I warn you. If you get seasick easily, you don't want to watch this. Oh, man. When she gets over 1,000 horsepower, she's using about four gallons of alcohol a minute. That takes a lot of air. Look at that. Just holding it at 1,000 horsepower. Oh, it's something you do every day, 1,100. I mean, whoa. Oh, God. Holy mackerel. We now have enough data to go on the engine dyno and ring out that engine they're sending us from Florida next week. As we go through this stuff, you're gonna to have to get used to this because I'm a disruptive guy. I don't do it the old way. I define the future. That's my game. That's what I've been doing for 60 years. Get ready for this one. We'll see you soon. So remember, if you guys want to follow along, all you got to do is subscribe.